Hey everybody, Nick from Merc Media here. I want to take a second and talk about a handy little app that I got for the iPhone about a month ago. The application is called Snapseed. It's $4.99, not a whole lot of money really, and I'm not usually one for paying for a whole lot of apps. I like to find free apps. This program I'm going to show you how to use, this application. It's awesome because it gives you a lot more control over manipulating your photos so you can really, really make them pop. Anyways, let's take a closer look at it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we've got the applications open here. This is what it looks like from the starting screen. And I'm gonna take you through all these different options down here so you can see what each and every one of these does. So to select your picture, you go up here to the camera and we've got one that I've already taken that I'm gonna select. This is a picture of my girlfriend, uh, Candace in 48 and I thought this would be an appropriate image to use because honestly, she's the one who's been bugging me for a long time saying she doesn't understand Snapseed and so this is her punishment, sorry. Let's start off at the very beginning here. This first one is automatic. Right away, I don't like the words automatic. That's the whole point to using Snapseed. It gives you full manual control. But for starters, if you're just starting off, you can use this one if you like. If you want to adjust it, you can see at the bottom, this actually says contrast and has a number between uh, zero and 100. So to manipulate that, you swipe left to right and you can see how that is boosting or flattening out the contrast. So. Uh, I'm going to leave that back to the default. If you ever want to change between uh, the different options within the screen, then you scroll up and down. Swipe up and down, we have contrast and we have color correction. So you can go back and forth between the two. So on color correction, swipe left and I'll color correct it one way and color correct it the other way, swipe to the right. I'll go into uh, selective adjust. Selective adjust I like using every once in a while. This is where you can actually set points on the screen to adjust specific areas. I'll show you what I mean. You select a point uh, or uh, select add point from down here and let's say I want to brighten up her face a little bit. So now we have this point right over her face where we can move it around if we like to adjust to a different area of the screen or if we just want to keep it there, we can keep it there. If you spread your fingers here, you can see uh, you can adjust the area of the adjustment that you're going to be applying. So the red area indicates where this effect is going to be taking place. And right now it's selected for brightness. So if I want to brighten up her face, there we go. Now her face is as hot as the sun. If I want to bring that down, then I just swipe it to the left and it comes down. So there we go and it's not so bright, not popping out as much. And again, swipe up and down and you can go between brightness, contrast and saturation. So let's say we wanted to brighten up her face, swipe down, or swipe up rather, let's say to contrast, add some uh, more contrast to her face there, and pick saturation, put some more, some extra color into her face. There we go, she's got a, she's got a nice red rosy cheek face. So if you wanted to progress, uh, go ahead with that effect, then press the right arrow and it will process it right into the picture. So it'll make a copy of your image, so you'll always have that original image of yours. And so you'll have your original and your snap seated one. If you just wanna go back and cancel, then hit this left arrow, or anytime you wanna see before and after, then it's pretty easy. It's just this uh, picture up here, this picture icon, tap that and let's see, and it'll show you, there we go, before and after. And what I was talking about, this question mark up here, if you ever tap that, all these instructions come up, very self, very easy to understand. Swipe this way, swipe that way, you know, to do this, do that. You can go into tune image here, this next one, gives you a bunch of other different options that will apply to the overall image. So swiping up and down, we have brightness, ambiance, contrast, saturation, and white balance. Uh, Brightness, contrast, saturation, they're pretty easy to understand. Uh, ambiance, yeah, honestly, I don't even really know what that does. Like, I, I know what it does, I just don't know what it means. Ambience, uh, like, to me, ambience is when you, like, set uh, candles and uh, have, you know, sexy music playing. Like, that sets the ambience of the room when you're trying to get in the mood. You know, the mood, or the atmosphere, I don't really know uh, why, you know, uh, what it means in terms of an image. Maybe someone can answer that for me. I do searches on, you know, what does ambience mean? And I get, you know, results that say, you know, yeah, get smelly candles and, uh, you know, put on some Barry Manilow, that sort of stuff. So it's a bit hard to search. 
So ambiance, you can see that it actually does have an effect. To me, it's almost like saturation, kind of like the vibrancy of the of the uh, colors. So swiping it all the way to 100, look, it's like uh, very much popping out. Kind of, this is really good for her jacket here. She always wears this very colorful jacket. So ambience really brings all those colors out. And then swiping it all the way to the left, it goes into the negative values, and it just kind of dulls all those colors down. So maybe that's what it should be called. You know boom or dull I don't know moving down here we got white balance white balance is to adjust the overall color temperature of your image so if you've taken a shot that's indoors and a lot of those orange tungsten lights are making it look very uh, very indoorsy and not, you know it doesn't look quite natural then you can correct it using this so swipe to the left it'll make it go really really cool swipe to the right it'll warm it up crop is something I always always use so this one is pretty easy as well. You can crop it to whatever size you really want. See so if you want to cut out unnecessary parts of the photo, or uh, if you like, you can tap this button down here and select from a bunch of presets that will conform it to specific aspect ratios. Moving on, I'll show you what details look like. Details, I usually use a little bit of this here and there. It has two different options here, sharpening and structure. Again, structure, I don't really know what that means. I know what it looks like, and I'll show you what it looks like, but you know, structure like you know, it'll build it up i don't know it's a bit tough to see on the screen in fact even when you're doing it yourself if you you know take a closer look at your phone it's really really difficult to see the effects of this and sometimes you can overdo it um because once you do once you apply sharpening to this image take a look at it on your computer screen blown up and you'll definitely see the effects there so try not to apply it, you know any more than let's say 10 or 15 15 20 max you know you you're not even i can i can't even see the effects of this really if you turn it crank it right up to 100 then you might see yeah, a little bit of change here but not a whole lot so apply it in small doses black and white pretty self-explanatory this is where we'll get into a bunch of options where you can apply overall filters and adjust the uh, level or the strength of those filters you can adjust brightness contrast and grain how about on vintage vintage again overall filters we're talking about so same thing as black and white brightness saturation you can change the texture strength and the center size and the style strength so what this means is you can adjust the brightness here moving down the saturation overall saturation of the image now what texture or uh, what uh, this particular function does it actually adds a texture to the image so it kind of makes it look like an old style photograph from the 70s so if you want, you can adjust even the type of texture by clicking this. So we have a few other textures we can select from, so you can uh, customize the exact look you want it to apply. I'm gonna stick with one just for now and turn up that texture strength all the way. You can see the changes before and after. We've got drama. Again, same thing, just different kinds of filters. Textures, more color filters, drama is high contrast looks. So same deal, we have filter strength and saturation. So then just crank the saturation a bit and we've got more color back into her face here and her jacket. Grunge, again, same, same sort of deal. Applies some really, really harsh effects and you have a few other different options here. Brightness, you know, bring the brightness down a little bit here. This is pretty extreme for a look. This isn't so annoying when you're trying to do a video and the world keeps interrupting you. Uh, center focus. Center focus is if you ever want to place focus, if you ever want to isolate a part of the image, if I really want to draw uh, attention to one part of the image, then it's kind of like uh, getting a sharp uh, depth of field. It's kind of like faux depth of field for your image. So I've got my point here. I can drag it all over the place, tell it where to focus on. I'm going to focus it on her face and blur out some of the image. And you can adjust the size, the radius of the effect. So I want it to be kind of small and just on her face here and you can adjust the blur strength so you can crank that blur up a ton so now her hands the rest of her jacket are blurred and your eyes being drawn to her face here or you can change the outer brightness so it almost it applies more of a vignette so you can crank the brightness up or down if you crank it down then you really isolate her face I'm exaggerating this so obviously don't do it this much but you can just apply like a small vignette on it and again, draw more attention to the face. Tilt shift, uh, the tilt shift isn't going to, you, it's gonna be tough to see on this particular one, but this is like creating, uh, it's like a fake miniature effect. So it makes objects appear, you know, usually it does really well if you're taking a picture of say traffic or something like that to make the 
uh, cars themselves look like miniatures on the track. Um, so this one, it'll be tough to kind of demonstrate it, but you can adjust the uh, area of the uh, area of focus for your effect. Again, I'll go onto her face here, and it applies a blur that uh, simulates that miniature effect. So you can adjust the transition, so you make it very, very wide or very narrow. I'm going to go very narrow, so I'll try to get pretty, pretty extreme look to show you what it looks like. Blur strength, we'll crank that up. And brightness, you can adjust the overall brightness, saturation, and contrast. So it's a little bit tough to see, but you can see this is kind of like the, the vignette that I showed you before, um, or the uh, center, blur, center blur, where you can apply kind of a miniature effect to your picture. You just have to shoot it right. Not like, don't do what I did. I didn't do it right. Retrolux is pretty new, and honestly, it's really, really extreme. I tend not to go for the really extreme looks because it's a bit much. But if it's something you can, you, you know, you really enjoy, go for it. And finally, frame. So if you are a person who likes to frame up your photos, again, I don't. But if you are, good for you. And this is how you do it. So by clicking on the gear here, two options pop up: format and colorized. Format conforms it to a specific, uh, conforms your frame and thus the photo to a specific aspect ratio. So clicking it will conform it to one by one. And so uh, you'd have to crop it right and make sure that it's going to be placed in the frame. Top right button here, you can click to proceed with your image, and it'll send it straight out to Facebook, Twitter, email, Google Plus, whatever. But uh, more, uh, what I tend to do more often than not is I'll just click Save to Photo Library, and then I can use it for whatever I like. Let's see, Twitter, delete that regular image. Beautiful shot of Sin 48, edited with Snapseed. Send. So this is what we've done, our masterpiece with Snapseed. And it didn't take us very long at all. You can see with just a little bit of time with Snapseed can really make a whole lot of difference with your photos. And not only that, you can then really say that photo is yours. You shot it, you edited it, and it's not just like slapping you know, a one-click filter from Instagram onto it and then uploading. Nothing against that, but I think just this looks cooler. It's from Neek Software. I totally recommend it. So if you do get it, or if you already do have it and you enjoy it, please take a few photos, snapseed the hell out of them, and send them to me. Tweet them to at Merck underscore media, and let me know what you come up with. Thanks for watching. See you next time.